Welcome back guys to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney where with much exploring and much talking we have now found ourselves back to Edgeworth as it seems he can no longer deny our help. We have learnt of his connection to the DL6 incident. His murdered father was the victim of course. That ties all our characters in together as knowing each other in some way or another. So let's learn more about it from Edgeworth's mouth. The DL6 incident was when my father died. Right before my eyes. He was shot and killed, and I saw it all. My memories from that time are foggy. I suppose it's a self-defense mechanism. In any case, a suspect was arrested. A man. It's pretty clear he was the one, or the only one, who could have killed my father. The spirit medium they used to talk to my late father said the same thing. It was an attorney by the name of Robert Hammond that cleared the suspect's name. And Hammond is the victim in the Gord Lake murder? Correct. Um, that spirit medium, that was my mum. What? You mean you're... It's strange. I thought the terrible incident was about to end. And now, this. About to end? The DL6 incident happened 15 years ago. 15 years ago. On December 28th. Ah, the Statute of Limitations! December 28th? The Statute of Limitations on the case runs out in three days. What? Um, Nick, what does that mean? Ah, let me explain! When a case's Statute of Limitations runs out, legally, the case never happened, which allows criminals to walk free even if they go, Haha! Do you know what? It happened. I did it. But you can't do anything about it. Three days from now, DL6 will be closed forever. What happened to the suspect? The one who got off innocent? I don't know. He disappeared from public view. Nobody knows where to. If he's still alive, he'd be about 50 years old now. I guess I can understand why he'd go into hiding. It'd be hard to live a normal life after being a murder suspect in such a big case. Indeed. Um, so was your father a lawyer? He was. Gregory Edgeworth. He was quite famous at the time, apparently. So, he was sort of trying to follow in his footsteps. But this seems to be a sore point in itself. I'd rather not talk about it. Why not, sir? Why not? Well, is there anything else that you can say to me at this point in time? Can I ask for him to... M Allow me to represent him yet again? Your attorney's badge? I can't say I really want to see one of those right now. Well, don't you want me to... Kind of go at this a bit more? Right, we'll show you this photo. Hmm, who would have thought there'd be a photo? Edgeworth, did you shoot him? What do you think, right? I don't think you're the kind to point a gun at anyone, no. So you didn't shoot him? No, I didn't. It wasn't me. Right. It pains me to ask you this now. It seems we've triggered the right thing. I know. He wanted to defend you. Yes. Will you? Of course we will. Ah, who could have guessed this day would come? Not me. This is my chance to finally pay you back. Pay him back? Pay me back? For what? I don't remember ever doing anything for you. Never mind. I guess you don't really need to know. Huh? My letter of request. Please give it to Detective Gumshoe. Okay, no problem. Well, I guess we should... What's that? Earthquake? Nick, it's a big one! Where? It's coming down. Phew! That was scary! Huh? Where's Edgeworth? There! He's on the floor in a ball, shivering! I guess he doesn't do so well with earthquakes. I've heard of running, but curling up in a ball? Well, I guess we're done. 
Mr. Edgeworth doesn't seem like he's going to stand up anytime soon. Let's go, Nick. Uh, right. We have to give Edgeworth's letter a request to Detective Gumshoe. No, we ask a friend or an ally who has been in the past. The person we're, you know, defending or aiming to defend. Are they okay? Would be the right thing to do. Then we move to the police department, criminal affairs. What's going on here? Yeek! What's wrong, detective? This wild lady comes in here just a while ago. Says she came to talk to you all after hearing what Mr. Wright had to say. What's this all about, pal? Lord of heart. Why are you going around finding more witnesses? Do you want to give Mr. Edgeworth a death sentence, pal? N no not at all. Just, I mean, she did see something. There's nothing I can do about that. I can't go around covering up evidence. Uh, You trying to say something about the way I do my job? No, sir. No, sir, at all. Well, we've got to give you the thing, but let's talk about the loss's testimony, eh? So, what did Miss Hart say? She said she saw Mr. Edgeworth fire the pistol. What? She even had a photograph to prove it. Right, I saw it too. There's no proof in that. You really can't tell from the photo who it is shooting. That's why she said she's going to enlarge the photo. That still won't work. It's a black and white image as well, and it's that... No, it won't work. She said it'll drop the quality, it might, but should let us see who's who. If you drop the quality on that, it looks like the foggy scene anyway. You're not going to get much out of that. Surely, she can do that? Okay, so there's going to be an enlarged photograph that shows Edgeworth in the act. Great. Just great. In any case, she's going to be the one testifying tomorrow. Huh? What happened to the other witness? Well, apparently there was a cancellation. What? A cancellation? Can you do that? I'm afraid tomorrow is going to be life or death for poor Mr. Edgeworth. We got a witness who said she saw the very moment of the murder. Yeah, I know. And we got a photo taken when the shot rang out. I say, that sounds like a pretty unwinnable case. But wait, what did Mia used to say? If he's innocent, there's got to be something I've overlooked. Indeed, well, we'll find it in the testimony, surely. That's how we do our work. Sounds like Mr. Edgeworth is going to ask the state to assign a public defender. No, he's not. I was just asked to file the paperwork. But you've still got time, pal. Go talk to him again for me, please. You have to convince him. You have to make him let you defend him, please. I know you're the only one who can do it, pal. You're the only one who can save Mr. Edgeworth. Yes. Yes, we can. Yes, I am. Not talk. Say that we got this. And we intend to. Look what I got. Hey, you did it, pal. Glad I waited till the last minute to file those papers. I'll rip them up and start new ones for you. Thanks, detective. Well, see you in court tomorrow then. Good luck, pal. Hey. You guys feel that earthquake a little while back? I was worried. Worried? We're fine. I've lived out here my whole life. I'm pretty used to them by now. Oh, I wasn't worried about you two. I was worried about Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, right. He did seem to overreact a little now that you mention it. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. It was a pretty big quake. I'm going to go check on him. You two go eat. Get your rest for tomorrow's trial. Later. Yeah, there's something about that, isn't there? I wonder what it is with Mr. Edgeworth and earthquakes. I wonder. He was never that scared of them when he was in school. Then again, I only really got to know him in fourth grade. He transferred to another school after that. I wonder what happened to Edgeworth. Well, we're not going to find out just now. As to be continued appears, and we move on. To a court date. Investigation over. Well, for now, anyway. As we move on to December 26th, 9.44 a.m. In defendant lobby number two. Karma? That's right. Manfred von Karma. He's the best prosecutor there is. He hasn't lost a case in his 40-year career. He is 
a god of prosecution right. A god! Not a single case? He'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. Hmm. Sounds like someone else I know, Edgeworth. Hmm. <laughs> you don't understand. I mean, he'll really do anything. Manfred von Karma is a man to be feared. That's quite a claim coming from someone who forges evidence. He taught me what it really means to prosecute. What? Just picture a prosecutor as vicious as me, multiplied by a factor of ten. Uh. So, so was he your teacher then, Mr. Edgeworth? Something like that. And now he's trying to get you found guilty? What a creep! Oh wait, maybe he's planning on losing on purpose to help you out. Not a chance. Why would you give up a 40-year unbroken record after all? He hasn't lost once in 40 years! 40 years! Also, you know, if you've got some integrity, you would always try to win your cases. If they were winnable, and if, you know, you weren't committing someone innocent to the... Yeah. Mind you, I bet that actually happens quite a lot still. Because people only care about their bottom line and their money and their, their you know, their dollar signs. It's one of those horrible realities about life, isn't it, really? He hasn't lost once in 40 years! 40 years! He's as ruthless as me, times 20! That's pretty ruthless. Like I said, he's a god among prosecutors. I guess that's something like Mia was to me. Speaking of Mia... Um, Mia? Uh-huh. We could really be using Mia's help right now, don't you think? Oh. I can't. Sorry, I tried, I really tried, but I couldn't reach. You couldn't reach? I think it's because I haven't been training. My powers are weak again. Oh man, oh bad timing. I'm really sorry. I'll try my best. I hope so. What are you whispering about? Uh, oh, it's nothing. Well, it's time. Let's head in. And so, we go to war! Or more to the point, we go to trial. Courtroom number three. And meet our adversary. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Hmm. How's this guy should be voiced? Um, Mr. Von Karma? Is the prosecution ready? Fool! You seriously think that I would stand here? Were I not completely prepared? <laughs> right! My apologies! He's even got the judge scared! Very well! Your opening statement, please! Decisive evidence! A decisive witness! What else could possibly be required? Uh, uh, nothing of course. That should be fine. The prosecution may call its first witness! What's with this guy? Is he royalty or something? How am I supposed to fight against this? I call the detective in charge of this case, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Okay, Gumshoe's first. Let's see how this goes. Describe the incident now! Y yes sir! Detective Gumshoe looks nervous. Uh, please take a look at the map. The murder happened late Christmas Eve, around midnight. There was one boat in the very middle of the lake. There were two men on the boat. Now there happened to be a woman camping here on the edge of the lake. At 12.10, she heard two pistol shots. Then the boat started to move. It went towards the boat rental shop. Hmm. As the overhead map is added to our court record, that's handy. Testify to the court about the arrest, now! Wait, Mr. Von Karma? Yes? Actually, I'm the one supposed to be handling these proceedings. Wrong. There is only one thing you need to do here. You will slam down your gavel and say the word guilty. That is your role. Uh, yeah, yes, of course. You're quite right. No, he's not. As we begin the testimony for the arrest of Edgeworth. 
a man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Now I didn't suspect him of anything at all. But the next morning, a body was found in the lake. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm, I see. Very well. Begin your cross-examination, attorney. Now! Barking orders in me, eh? Well, let's see how he likes me pressing statements. A man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. Now, I want to hear more about that. He received a call from a man? Uh, yep. But you said there was a woman camping there. She was the one who heard the two gunshots, right? What was his voice like then? Was that real? Is there a bug? That was weird. That woman and the man who called in a report are two different people, obviously. Different people? There were two witnesses. Uh, their testimonies were quite similar, however. Today, I've summoned the woman who was camping. The woman who was camping? Not a heart. What happened next, detective? I'm still surprised by that guy's voice. I need to hear that again. We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. How long was it between receiving the report and your arrival at the lake? Uh, well, I say it was about three minutes. That's pretty fast. Yeah, the law enforcement works really fast around this place. Our motto for the month is get there quick. Why is his voice so weird? It's like, I can't do that voice and be like, Detective, you will refrain from casually revealing department secrets. He'd be like that. That doesn't seem to fit him. How is his voice like that? I'm completely derailed. I can't take this in now. Ah! Right. Back to what I consider a voice was. He looks royalty. He looks posh. So, Detective, you will refrain from casually revealing department secrets. <laughs> yes, sir. Sorry, sir. I look forward to your next year's salary review. So much to look forward to these days. This is no time for dejected daydreaming. Continue! H yes, sir. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. What was Mr. Edgeworth like when you saw him then? Well, from what I saw, he looked pretty relaxed. Not like a murderer at all, really. Please stop conjecturing, because it's not going to help me. What the hell with that voice? Detective, the court requires the facts, not your opinion. Yeah, I, I think that doesn't work. How many years have you been on the force? Facts only, detective. Hard, cold, objective, facts. H yes, sir. Man, he's got his share of objections. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all. I don't think there's any point to press that, but let's do it and hear the badness. Why didn't you think he was suspicious? You should know. We have a deep trusting relationship with the prosecutors again. You're going to get the weird voice. Detective, the court isn't interested in your musings. Deep trusting poppycock. I've never heard so many flippant comments from an active detective on the force. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe doesn't look so good. Continue, now. But the next morning, a body was found in the lake. Did you find any clues on the body? A single bullet was recovered from the body. He was shot through the heart, fatally. Judge, here's the bullet. It didn't strike bone, so its shape is well preserved. Very well, the court accepts this bullet into evidence. As we now have ourselves a bit more evidence for our pressing too. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Hold it. Why is that? Well, we found the murder weapon in the boat. The murder weapon? A pistol. Detective Gumshoe, that is a vital piece of information. Please revise your testimony. Right, S sorry, Your Honor. The murder weapon we found in the boat was decisive evidence. Well, I guess it is, in a way. 
What about the pistol made it decisive evidence? Hmm. <laughs> Hack. He has the same evil laugh as Edgeworth. There were fingerprints on the pistol found in the boat. They were clear prints from Mr. Edgeworth's right hand. What? That is kind of decisive. Order! Order! So Mr. Edgeworth's fingerprints were found on the murder weapon? I yes, Your Honor. Judge, this is the weapon in question. A accepted into evidence. Okay, so now we have a pistol as well. Members of the court! Well, we say members of the court, but as Von Karma here goes on his spiel, we we'll end the episode at this moment in time. Join me next time for more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney as we've been completely thrown by a voice that can't even be real. It can't be real. Trial has begun, though, and we look to face off against the most formidable of opponents next time. Join me then for more. Bye-bye.